All right, here we are. Uh, chapter three, section three is called function notation. Uh, uh, this one will be pretty simple. Um, we've actually talked about this before, so a lot of this might not seem uh, surprising at all to you. Okay. And here's our notes for function notation 3.3. All right. So converting converting uh, a linear equation into function notation. And we talked about this already. Um, the notation function of x right there, it's the same thing as y in, in the equations, OK? When it's noted like this, that would be function notation. When it's noted like this, that would be an equation. So um, it's pretty simple. These are interchangeable. And when you do interchange them, it changes it from a uh, from a equation to a function or from a function to an equation. It's really simple, OK? So here's your example. Here's an equation. This equation says y will equal 10 times x plus 7, OK? Uh, if you want to change this from um, a linear equation into function notation, you just simply replace the y with the function of x, okay? And uh, that's what all you have to do. It's pretty simple when converted from an equation to function notation. Now, you know, what are functions? Functions are, uh, you know, they're, they're equations, and, uh, but they do have a function. They do have a purpose. And like uh, you can imagine a box like a function machine here. Uh, this this box is a machine, and here's the function for this box. Okay, so what we put into this function machine is your x. The number for x that goes in uh, goes right here for x. That is your input. Okay, remember inputs. Uh, then you work this out, and the answer that comes out of the function machine is your output. So really, I should probably change the color of this. I should probably make it, um, let's make it blue. And then uh, here's our output. And we'll make that guy uh, green. Boom. Okay. So the input goes into the function machine for X. You work out the math. And then the outcome's the answer, which is the output. So look at this function right here. The function of X will equal... This, this is what we gotta work out. Let's say I input five and for X, okay? So, uh, you know what, let me, let me note that it would look like this. Just so you know, it would look like function of X, no, actually it'd be say the function of five. Okay, let's uh, make that a F. Good. Okay, so basically, this is the notation telling you to put five in for x, all right, for the function. Let me um, give that a color. I'll give it uh, do, 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 purple, green. Okay, cool. All right. <clears throat> so I want to know the function of five, and what that means is input five for x. So what would come out of the machine if I put 5 in for x? Well, what is 4 times 5? 20. What is 20 plus 3? 23. Out of the machine, the output would be 23. Input 5, output of this function, 23. Do you know how to make an ordered pair with that? Uh, I think you would, huh? Let me uh, do it right here. Remember, the ordered pair is in parentheses. The first number is the input, which was 5, comma. The, the second number is the output, which is 23. That is your ordered pair. Okay? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right. So that just kind of gives you an idea, you know, of, of functions. All right? If this was function of 7, it would say f of 7. That means you would put 7 right here and then do the math and then out would have came what? Seven times four is 28 plus three. Out would have came 31. If I put seven in, 31 would have came out, okay? All right, so evaluating a function, which is kind of what we were just doing right now. We were evaluating a function. 
evaluate the function of x that equals this, negative 4 times x plus 7, when x is 2, and also you're going to evaluate when x is negative 2. All this means here is there's going to be two problems, okay? So here's the uh, function right here. The function of x equals negative 4 times x plus 7. And now it says function of 2. And what this means, this is telling you, throw 2 in for x. 2 is your input into the function machine. Okay, so 2 goes in for x into this function machine right here. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8 plus 7, negative 1. Okay, so when I input 2, boom. Uh, what is my output? Negative 1. Uh, let's make that bold. Boom. Okay. And how would you write this as an ordered pair? Remember, ordered pair? How would you write it? Remember, you always write the input first. So it would be 2, comma, negative 1 if you were to do that in an ordered pair. All right. Uh, that's part 1 because it says evaluate this function when x is 2. But also, so we did that here first, we, we put 2 into the function machine and we evaluate it, which means we solved it, and the negative 1 was our output. The other one they want you to um, put into the function machine is negative 2, okay? So that's where you see here, function of negative 2. In other words, it says put negative 2 in place of the x, all right? You put it right here in place of the x, negative 2. What is negative 4 times negative 2? That would be a positive 8. Positive 8 plus 7 is 15. So guess what? When I, uh, when I input negative 2 into this function machine right here, uh, my answer, what comes out as my answer? The, the uh, output of that function machine, my answer is uh, 15. Okay. Again, could you write this as an ordered pair, input of negative 2, output of 15? You sure can. It would be parentheses, negative 2, comma, 15, all right? So, but anyway, um, they're not asking for ordered pairs on that problem, okay? So what they are asking for is they want you to evaluate this function for these two guys here. So what are your answers? Well, your answers would be negative 1 from the uh, 2 going in, and 15 from the negative 2 going in. So that would be your answers right there, uh, negative 1 and 15, okay? Uh, interpreting function notation, all right? So we kind of done this a little too already, but, you know, here we go. We'll get a little bit better on this. My screen just a tiny bit. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, so let function of t be the outside temperature t hours after 6 a.m. So this is going to be a little interesting, okay? So um, t is an unknown, because it's a variable, it's an unknown amount of hours after 6 a.m., okay? So check this out. What does this mean when the function of 0 is 58? Okay, well, zero is t, right? I'm going to bold that too. And t is the number of hours after 6 a.m. So if t is zero right here, that means zero hours after 6 a.m. What is zero hours after 6 a.m.? That would be 6 a.m. So guess what? The temperature, zero hours after 6 a.m., which would be 6 a.m. The temperature at 6 a.m. is 58 degrees. So that's how you can interpret that. Okay. Hmm. What does this say right here? It says that T is 6. All right. What does that mean? If T is 6, that means 6 hours after 6 a.m. Who knows what time it is 6 hours after 6 a.m. Isn't that noon? Okay. So the temperature at noon is uh, unknown right? We don't know what the temperature is at noon. And you know why I don't know the temperature at noon? Because it says right here, six hours after 6 a.m., which is noon, the temperature is N. And N is unknown. So basically, here's your answer. Um, noon, uh, at noon, the temperature is 
unknown. Okay. Um, this is interesting here, number three, because number three, you have the function on both sides of this inequality. Uh, the function three is less than the function of uh, nine. So what is that telling you? Remember, function of t, t is three hours. This is three hours after 6 a.m. This right here is nine, nine hours after 6 a.m. So what is three hours after 6 a.m.? That would be 9 a.m., correct? What is nine hours after 6 a.m.? That would be 3 p.m. So it's saying that the temperature at 9 a.m. will be less than the temperature at 3 p.m., okay? So that's what it's saying. We have two times here, three hours after 6 a.m., which is this, and nine hours after 6 a.m., which is this, um, so basically the message here is that the weather is lower or cooler at 9 a.m. because it says 9 a.m. is less than 3 p.m. Okay, so that's how we interpret, uh, interpreting function notation, all right? So you just got to know that they're saying uh, inside of the parentheses after the function is T, and T represents the number of hours after 6 a.m. All right, solving for the independent variable. All right, we have this function right here. See this function? This right here is the function machine, right? All right, find the value of x for which the function of x will equal negative seven. Okay, now this is a little tricky because it's not asking you to plug in negative seven for X. If it was asking you to plug negative seven in for X and solve it, it would have said F comma negative seven, okay? But it's not asking you to do that. Now, um, it's telling you that the function of X is negative seven. So guess what I do? I replace the function of X with negative seven, okay? And now look at my problem. Look at this function. When I replace the function of x with negative 7, I can do this because it says it right here, that the function of negative x is equal to negative 7. So this is equal to negative 7. So that means if it's equal to each other, I can replace this with negative 7, being that they are equal to each other. All right. Now, take a look at my problem. Now I have negative 7 equals 2 thirds x minus 5. Um, what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the value of what? The value of x. Okay, we're finding the value of x for when the function of x, this guy, is negative 7. And how do you find for the value of x when you have this? Well, you have to get x by itself, okay? And I know this looks a little tricky, but um, we're still going to use the things that we've learned in this year in Algebra 1 in order to get the x by itself. All right. So um, the first thing you notice is here's the equal sign. Uh, the x variable is on the right side of the equal sign. So no worries. I'm going to get I'm going to work the right side and get x by itself. So in order to do that, I need to get rid of this minus five. five. To get rid of minus 5, you add 5, and that will cancel those two out. Uh, of course, if I add 5 to the right, I must add 5 to the left. Negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2. Uh, these two cancel, leaving you with 2 thirds x. Now, this is the tricky part because you're like, Mr. Schweitzer, I, I, how do you undo x being multiplied by 2 thirds? Okay, uh, we really haven't done too many problems where I had to get rid of a fraction that's multiplying the variable. Um, but we've done it a couple times, and it's in the very first chap chapter's notes. But if I want to undo this uh, multiplication of two-thirds to my x, I need to multiply two-thirds x by the reciprocal of two-thirds. What is the reciprocal of two-thirds? We have to flip them, three over two. Now, if I multiply this right side by three over two, I must multiply this left side by three over two, okay? And you notice I, I, I changed negative two to negative two over one. And I did that because, you know, when you're multiplying fractions, 
you would like to multiply the uh, the numerators on the top, and you would like to multiply the denominators on the bottom. So I changed negative two into a fraction of negative two over one, so I can uh, multiply the tops and multiply the bottoms, the numerators and the denominators. Okay. Now let me show you why when you multiply the, by the reciprocal of this, why it eliminates each other. Multiply the top. What's three times two? Six. Multiply the bottom. Two times three. Six. What is six over six? Six over six is one. What is one times x? Simply x. Okay, so that's how you get rid of these fractions. You multiply by its reciprocal, and you can get rid of the fraction and have the variable by itself. Okay, what's happening over here? What is 3 times negative 2? That's negative 6 over 2 times 1, 2. What is negative 6 over 2? That is negative 3. So x is equal to negative 3. And uh, now I saw, the, uh, I saw the, uh, the answer for what they were asking. They were asking um, when, when the function of x is negative 7, what is the x? And when we worked it out, x will be negative 3. So your answer is, notice I, I can flip the uh, left side and the right side of an equal sign because it doesn't matter. Uh, the equal sign makes it equal anyway. So I could flip those two, which is why I did. So that way my answer can sound normal, x equals negative 3 uh, as the answer. Okay. So basically, what does that mean? Um, when I told you what the function of x is, is negative 7, I was telling you the output, you know. So um, the output was negative 7, uh, whereas the input, which is what we solve for, we solve for x, the input was negative 3. Okay, so how would you write that as a ordered pair? Let's see here. How would you write that as an ordered pair? Okay, remember, I had to solve for x which is the input. And when I did solve for x, it was negative 3, right? What was the uh, output? The output was uh, already told, they told you that the output was negative 7 right here. All right, so negative 7. And uh, there's, my, there's my order pair. Now, if I don't put this in equation mode, it looks really goofy. So I'm going to put it, I'm going to go like this, and then you can go up to uh, insert. Uh, equation and you see how it changes it to much better negative and positive signs. Okay, so anyway, that was a little different. Um, this problem was different in that they they tell you what the function of x is. They tell you the output is negative seven. You need to work to find the input, which is different than um, dif different than these problems here. They tell you what the inputs are, and you need to work it out to find the output. Okay. All right. Graphing. Graphing a linear function. Now, when you graph this, it's going to be on a Cartesian coordinate system. Remember, uh, the Cartesian coordinate system, that, that graph has both the X number line, uh, which is the X axis, and the uh, Y number line, which is the Y axis. Okay. So, <clears throat> This is very interesting because uh, we're going to graph this um, this uh, function right here. We're going to put it on a graph. Now, in order to put it on a graph, I need to find ordered pairs. And I've been showing you what ordered pairs are. You know, ordered pairs uh, is parentheses. In fact, you know what ordered pair looks like. Let's see. Ordered pair looks, you know, ordered pair has uh, x as the input and then y is the output all right that's what an order pair looks like right and again i'm gonna i'm gonna make that look good like an equation oh, there you go okay um so anyway in order to get order pairs we need to put some independent variables we need to do some inputs and find out what the outputs are in order to find some ordered pairs that we can graph okay you get to pick the numbers for the inputs. You do, okay? I just happen to pick these numbers right here because I want a little negatives. I want a zero. I want a positive. And I want numbers that are easy to do math with. So that's kind of where I went with that. All right. So let's do some math. 
these are going to be the five different inputs. So guess what? If I have five different inputs, that means I have five problems to work out. I'm going to start with negative two. So when negative two goes in for X, see X is right here, right? Negative two goes in for X. What will be my output? What, what, what is two times uh -huh. negative two? Negative four. What's negative four plus five? One. Okay. So guess what? This, this question mark here can be replaced with the number one because uh, I know that's the answer for when I input negative two. What's the answer when I input negative one? See, negative one's going in place of the x. The x is being multiplied by two. So now I put negative one in for x. Two times negative one is negative two plus five is three. So in place of this question mark, I get to put three because when I input negative one, my output is three. Um, you can see we do the other three problems too. What happens when the input is zero for x? Two times zero is zero, zero plus five. Your output, when you input zero, your output is five. What happens when you input one? Well, one for x is right there. Two times one is two, two plus five, seven. What happens when I input two for x? Two times two is four, four plus five, nine is my output, okay? So I did five problems and I did them pretty quick, right? Didn't take very long to do those five problems. And now this is what my table looks like, okay? Because now I put my outputs based on my inputs, all right? Guess what my input output table just created? This is one ordered pair here, a second ordered pair here, a third ordered pair here, a fourth ordered pair here, and a fifth ordered pair here. Order pair here five ordered pairs and you know what the ordered pairs look like right it's this thing right here what goes first the input comma what goes second the output okay so check it out from that table i create these five ordered pairs right look negative two one is this guy right here uh negative one three is negative one three this guy right here input output uh, zero five is this guy right here. Zero input, five output. Uh, one seven is one input, seven output. And finally, uh, the last order pair is two input, nine output. There you go, two comma nine. Okay. What's good is I have five points. And guess where I get to put these five points? Each order pair is one point on the graph. So I get to put all five of these on the graph. And that's going to help me graph this, uh, you know, linear function. Okay, so here we go. You can see right here. Mm, well, negative 2 for x, 1 for y. So look at this. This point right here, when you look at x, here's the x number line. It's negative 2 for x. It's positive 1. For the y number line. See this point? Negative 2 for the x, because this is 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2 for the x, and 1 for the y, because this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This would be negative 1, negative 2, right? So again, negative 2 for x, 1 for y, and that is this guy right here. Negative 1 for x, 3 for y. That's the next point. Look, this point right here negative 1 for x and 3 for y, okay? Uh, this point is 0 for x, right? Because you take it straight down, it's it's 0 on the x number line. Remember, this is the x number line. It's This is 0 on the x number line. Uh, what is it on the y number line? On the y number line, it's 5. So you see that right here, 0 for the x and 5 for the y. Okay, this is 1, 7. In fact, I might be able to see this now. Almost. So close. Anyway, one this point right here is 1 on the x number line. See how it goes down to the 1. And 7 for the y number line. See that? 1, 7. And then the last order pair that we created by doing this table right here, by doing the math, was 2, 9. Okay? Here's 2, 9. Uh, 2 is right here. And 9 is right here, okay? Now, here's the thing is, this, this function, I can do any, I can do decimal numbers in here. It doesn't have to be, I mean, I did whole numbers in here, right? 
All my inputs were whole numbers because that makes your math easier. And, you know, however, if I wanted to, I could put I could put anything really into that formula. I could uh, put fractions, I could put decimals, whatever. So anyway, the, the point I'm saying is these these points aren't the only answers for that function. Uh, in fact, everything through this line, you notice how the five points that I plotted on the graph now create this line. And I have an arrow here because it'll go forever in that direction. And I also have an arrow here because it can go forever in the negative direction as well. I mean, you can you can do infinite amount of problems on this, this formula. It's not just those five. Okay, so anyway, um, we are now, that is the successfully drawing a graph of this function. So you know what this blue line represents? Every single point, all these points, point, 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 all these points on the line. And, and there's infinite amount of points because it goes infinitely that direction. It goes infinitely that direction. But every single point on this line is a solution for this function. All right, it's a solution for this function. This function is represented on the graph by this line. This line represents that function. All right. So that's how we do that. Okay. So just a quick little thing here. Um, you might want to rewind on some of these. Uh, just, you know, you need to know that uh, you know, the function of x serves the same role as y. Um, and uh, the thing is, right, because when we did this, uh, when we did our, our thing here, you notice, where is it? Yeah, okay, you notice that we have the function of x here. We don't have y, okay? Uh, but it's the same purpose as y, okay? So when you graph this, your output is y. Did you notice that? That when I graphed it, when I put these ordered pairs together, the first one was my x, and the second one, which is the function of x, is my y. And I need to have an x and a y because when I graph, I have an x axis here, x number line here, and a y number line here. I need to, uh, when I graph that, I need to have both the x number line and the y number line for these ordered pairs. All right, hopefully that was helpful, and we will uh, see you on the next one. See you.